Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Guys, today I have a special recipe to make for you. I'm making some bread fruit balls with some saltfish or bacalao, some people may call it. I will be making that for you today, but I'm gonna put in a little twist to it and make it a little bit different, okay? So I want you to join me in making this. Go ahead and get some breadfruit and get some stuff together. I have two breadfruits here. They're small, but this is called breadfruit, guys. And for those of you who don't know who are not from the islands and not familiar with this, sometimes this gets a little bit bigger. And um, this is a meal right here. You, and I have a video of when I was in Barbados of a breadfruit tree. Hopefully, maybe I'll see if I can find that bit video and insert it in here for you so you can see what it looks like. But this grows on a tree, a very big tree. This grows on a tree. And this is a fruit or vegetable that people fed the kids with years ago. Years ago, growing up in the islands, there wasn't a lot to eat, but you can always go outside. Pick a breadfruit when they were in season and one of these can feed a whole family because there's a lot of different things that you can do for it. So today I have my breadfruit and I have some salted codfish. We got a saltfish. I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the stove and I'm going to boil it at least three times. Boil it, pour the water off, put it back in. Boil it again, pour the water off to get all the salt out because you don't want it to be salty. You want to try to get rid of that salt, okay? So, guys, the first thing I'm going to do with my breadfruit is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... And this is what the breadfruit looks like on the inside. And this is what the breadfruit looks like on the inside. This here is called the heart of the breadfruit. So when you cut the breadfruit, guys, you are going to cut this piece out just like that. Because you're not going to use this. You're going to put this in the garbage. You're not going to use this. And you're just going to use the breadfruit itself. And we're going to peel. This is the skin. Of course, we don't need that. We're going to peel that off. Then I'm going to put this in a pot with some salted water. And this is, I'm going to boil. So let me go ahead, peel all of this. Get this in some water soaking off the salt off of it. So when I've done all of that, I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like. I'll be right back. Pushing up, peeling the last piece of breadfruit. So in here, I have all the breadfruit that I just peeled. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash this off. I'm going to add some salt to it, and I'm going to put them on to boil. So guys, so now I just washed the breadfruit, put the breadfruit in here. So I am going to sprinkle a little bit of salt, maybe about a tablespoon of salt in there. You can always add more salt to it later if you want more salt. Over here, I have the salt fish. It's gonna come to a boil. I'm gonna pour this water off and I'm gonna put some fresh water in here and we boil it again because we're trying to get the salt out. As soon as this is all done, I will be right back. I have my salted codfish. So I'm going to start with this first and then I'm going to go on to that. I'll show you what I'm going to do. We have to go step by step. So first thing we're going to have to do because I boiled this salt fish and all the salt is out of it. So now I'm going to go over to the stove. I over here have some garlic right here. I have some onion. This is one whole onion and this is two small tomatoes that is chopped up. I will be cooking them with the um, salt fish. So I have over here on the stove, I already put a pan on, I put two tablespoons of olive oil in the pan. So let me go over the stove and show you what I'm gonna do, let's go. I have a couple tablespoons of olive oil in here. I'm going to put my garlic in. Saute this here in here for a couple minutes. 
make sure you stay always stay close to your garlic because this burns very quickly okay you don't want it to burn you just want to bring those nice flavors out then I'm going to add some onion to that are we gonna saute this onion and I'm gonna leave this here for a few minutes until the onions are softened up and then I'll be back so after we saute our onion and garlic for a few minutes I'm gonna go ahead and add my tomatoes And then I have a couple of spices here, which is not a lot, but I have some onion powder, some paprika, and some curry powder. But just remember that you can add your own spices. You don't have to add the same spice that I add. You can add your own, whatever is your favorite. So I am gonna let this cook down for a few minutes, and then I'll be back. So over here, we have our onions and tomatoes and everything in here. Now we're gonna add a salt fish to that. And continue to mix this up. Now if it was making gravy, we would add some water to this. And um, you know, so you have a gravy to go on top of the rice or your cuckoo or whatever because when people eat in cuckoo they like a lot of gravy on their cuckoo okay but we're not making a gravy so i am just going to cook this down for a few minutes and then we'll come back to it so what okay guys so now i have everything here breadfruit is all done over here we have the breadfruit i i have the salt fish is already and I have some other ingredients that I'm going to be adding to that I have some egg wash that we're going to be using we're making breadfruit balls guys so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be mashing the bread breadfruit and then I'm going to stuff the breadfruit with salt fish I'll put salt fish in the center now if you don't like salt fish you don't have to use that you can use um, ground beef you can use just vegetables you can use whatever you want to do you can stuff it with whatever you want okay so my choice today is salt fish because I love salt fish so um, I also have some flour here that I'll be using but as I go ahead I will show you the steps so the first thing I'm going to do is mash the breadfruit now I did not cook this breadfruit until it was too soft. So when you're cooking your breadfruit, breadfruit does not take a very long time to cook. And you don't want to cook it until it's, you know, too soft and molt away. You don't want to cook it that way. Okay. So you cook it for, as you can see, this is still nice and firm. So you cook it for a few minutes and it's still nice and firm. And then you mash it. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to mash this. When I'm mashing the breadfruit, I'm going to add a little butter, not a lot of butter, but I'll add a little butter to it to help soften it up a little bit. And I will go ahead and mash this, and then I'll come back when it's all mashed up. I have it all mashed up now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer to a spoon just to stir it up because I don't need to mash it anymore. I am going to add a few things to it. I have a little... And this is like half a teaspoon. You can add whatever. If you want to chop up some onions, chop up some peppers and add in there, you can do whatever you want to do just to spice it up the way that you like it. This is half a teaspoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of all-purpose seasoning, and half a teaspoon of parsley. So I am just going to sprinkle them all in there. And I'm just going to mix this up well to make sure it is all mixed in. So you're going to mix it up for a little bit. Some tight. Okay. <clears throat> so guys, this is the bright fruit is nice and tight like this because what happened is I did not cook it for a very long time and I took it out, I put it in a colander, let it drain 
for a little bit to get all that excess water off. Then I put it in here and I, was, and I mashed it. I just put a little bit of butter to it because I don't want to put too much. And the reason for that is that when you are going to turn it into a ball, you want it to be nice and tight. You don't want it to be too soft. Like if it cooked too soft because then it's going to stick to your hand. It's going to be hard for you to make into a ball. Okay. So remember that when you're going to make it. All right, guys. So now I have my bread fruit. Guys, we all love a good breadfruit. This is a lot of breadfruit. I had two small breadfruits, but it looked like they yield a lot. It seemed like a lot more than it. Anyway, now let's get started. So I have some flour here. I am going to put some flour in my hand. Okay. I'm going to take some of this, and this is, depends on how big you want your ball to, balls to be. So... I'm going to put some, and the reason I'm putting the flour in my hand is just to stop it from sticking to my hand. See, it's not sticking. So this is how you're going to do it. And as I say, you can season that with everything, whatever. And as you saw, when it was cooking, I put a little bit of salt to it. So I'm going to flatten it out like this. I'm going to flatten it out. Put a little bit of more flour just because it feels a little bit sticky right there. Put a little bit of flour and flatten it out like that. And then I'm going to make a little pocket. Make a little pocket here. And then I'm going to take, see like a little bowl right there? Just make that. And then I'm going to take my salt fish here. And put some in the center. Just press it down like that. And then we're going to go and squeeze our ball. Squeeze it in. And then roll it. You see? And we have a ball right here. I'm just going to rest it on this plate for a few minutes while I continue to make another one. So again, let me just make a second one so you see what I'm talking about. I've done. And we're going to make sure your hands are clean. My hands are clean. I wash my hands. Well, when I'm in the kitchen, I'm always washing my hands. I'm right next to the sink and every two seconds for everything I'm washing my hands. So my hands are clean. So make sure you have clean hands, okay? When you're doing this and we're gonna make a, we're gonna flatten it out like a little, maybe a, a bit, right? And if your hands get sticky and you feel like you need a little more flour, that's why you have the flour right here. You can put a little bit in your, um, a little bit of flour on your hands so that it wouldn't stick to your hands and you're gonna you're gonna flatten it out like a flat patty patty big whatever you want to be right and then we're gonna go ahead go wrong and just make like a little bowl now, then we're gonna just a little bowl just on the inside just kind of press it in, in the inside that way you have enough room. So as I said, you know, you don't have to use salt fish. You can use ground beef. You can make a little, some ground beef, you know, meat with sauté with onions and all that stuff. And you can put some meat in here. You can do some sauté, some vegetables, some cabbage and carrots and so on. Sauté some spinach and stuff if you like the vegetables. And put it in here in this little pocket. You can just eat it just, you can fry it and eat it just like this. But there's different ways to eat it. So this is just, I'm just showing you a little sample of, you know, another way that you can do it. And you put your little salt fish in the center and just press it down. And when you press it down, just squeeze it together like that. Just squeeze it in. Just squeeze it. And then you go ahead and you 
you got a ball right there okay so I'm gonna go ahead and make a, f a few I can't talk <laughs> guys I'm gonna go ahead and make a few of these and then after I make a few I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do next okay so I'll be right back okay guys so here are some of I didn't do all of them the breadfruit balls this one is a little big I said maybe Charles will have that one or is it this one anyway these are the breadfruit balls guys that have the salted codfish or bacala whatever you may call it on the inside now the next step to this is I have some oil on the stove you put some oil on because we're gonna you know we're gonna fry these up it's better to deep fry them I'm not gonna be using as much oil but you deep fry them I am going to take them I have some egg wash here I am going to go ahead and dip it in the egg wash then take it out and I have some breadcrumbs here I will roll it in the breadcrumbs so I'm gonna go ahead and then I'm gonna take it over to the stove and we're gonna put it in some oil okay so here is my just roll it in your egg wash and then put it here and now we're gonna roll it in our breadcrumbs so let's go over to the stove let me show you what I'm gonna do next okay guys so my oil is pretty hot I tested my oil by just throwing a little tip of water in there to test it now I'm gonna put my breadcrumb my my breadfruit in there we're gonna fry this up guys but as I said if you have more oil you can put more oil in there and you know cover the whole thing and deep fry it that way I'm using olive oil so I'm using a little bit less so you know I don't want to waste on my olive oil so um you know but guys this is how you fry it so I will be back as soon as those are brown I'll let you see what they look like that's it guys Wrong and looking good. We have some breadfruit balls coming up. Okay, guys. So these are done. And when they're done, I just take them out. Oop, if I could get it out. And just rest it here on this rack so the air can pass through it. nice huh guys yep so we're gonna rest this here for a couple minutes as I said so that they can cool and I'm gonna go on I'm gonna add some more oil in here and I'm gonna go on to fry the other ones and then when they're all done then I'll come back and I'll taste them and tell you how it tastes okay guys over here breadfruit rolls are all done I made of course they were you know were a lot more than I made so here's some of them I decided that these will go in the freezer and whenever you're in the mood for them you just take them down and thaw them out let them come to room temperature and then you can do your batter and your breadcrumbs and then just fry them I didn't think I needed to fry all of them tonight but I will save those for another day so you can do that as well okay so these are some that I did right here I kind of dress it up a little bit right there make it look pretty for you it's just a little bit of parsley and I want to go ahead and taste it I'm just gonna hold it by my hand it's pretty cool because I want to break the inside so you can see what it looks like on the inside see and when you break it on the inside that's what it looks like so nice and soft on the inside and um it has that the crunch on the outside so let me taste it for you mm -hmm. if you like breadfruit 
and saltfish together, you would enjoy this. It is really good. Mm. Mm. It's good if you got a piece of your butt and you got a piece of the salt fish and breakfast at the same time. Mm. Guys, just something different because I know sometimes you guys have a lot of bright fruit. Sometimes you have a bright fruit tree, you have a lot of bright fruit. You don't know what to do with the bread fruits. You give away the bread fruits. Da, 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 da. This is just something you can make. These bread fruit balls, you can freeze them. And whenever you're in the mode, you can take some down. And you can fry them up. I bake them in the oven too. But they don't really have that nice crispy crunch on the outside. But you can put them in the oven. Or if you have an air fryer, you can put them in the air fryer. And do it that way as well. The air fryer works really well. Guys, this was fun. Thank you so much for joining me. I had fun. I hope you had fun as well. Don't forget to share the video, like the video, subscribe to the video, and leave me a comment. I love to read your comments. Until next time, bye-bye.